Hi everybody. Today we are going to be creating a fish together. And one of the things that we're going to work on is creating bumpy lines so that our fish has a really nice scaly texture. So we're gonna start by drawing a big old fish right in the middle of our paper. At this end, I'm gonna make about halfway up my paper, maybe a little higher, I'm going to make a little curve just like that. That is going to turn into our fish's mouth. At this end of my paper, I am going to make a much larger curve, not quite corner to corner, but still pretty big. Then we're going to make the belly of our fish. And I like my fish bellies to be a little bit pudgy. I think it makes them look cute. If you want yours to be a little bit thinner, you just won't make your line curve down as far. So I like mine to kind of come down a big old fish belly. Then I'm going to keep going a little bit because I'm going to make part of the tail. So now we have the bottom edge of our fish. Our next line, we're going to make the top part of the fish, but we want to make sure that we leave room for the fin that is on top of our fish. That is actually what helps keep the fish kind of straight up and down instead of flopping over and swimming sideways. So that fin is pretty important. We want to make sure that we're including that on our work. So I'm going to make my curve line. And notice it went past this line. Either way is fine. If it ends up matching, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's okay too. So my tail is a little bit crooked, but that's all right. We can deal with that. And next, I am going to add that top fin that we talked about because it's really important. So I curve back. And then you can make it a wiggly line coming down to touch the body. Then I also like making my fish have a nice big cartoon eyeball. So I'm going to make that circle. If you want a smaller one or if you want a bigger one, that's fine. But we want to make sure that we're leaving plenty of space over here empty so that we can make our scales in a minute. Inside this circle, we're going to make a smaller one and then an even smaller one. And that's going to be for the shine in the eye. We're going to leave that white. I think that next we need to add the fin that goes on the side of our fish that helps propel it forward. And that is going to be a curve back a little wiggle, but then it's going to come closer to here because it. this is where it attaches to the body. And we're going to add a couple of curved lines. We're going to go one, two to add some lines. And we're going to do the same thing up on this top fin. And we're also going to add a couple of lines in the tail. So now, we have our big outline of our fish, the fins, and our tail. What's next is for us to add those bumpy scales so that our fish looks like it would be scaly. I like starting mine kind of behind where the eye is. I know that fish are scaly everywhere, but I just kind of like how it looks doing it that way. So I am going to start and I'm going to go bump, bump, partial bump because I'm going to stop where that fin is because I don't want to draw the bump through it. And then I'm going to make an imaginary, I'm, it's like I'm imagining that I'm drawing that line, but I'm not really a bump and it comes through the fin. So I didn't draw it. And one more. 
So now you're going to see I have one, two, three, four, five bumps. The next step is kind of cool. What we do is we're going to bump from the top of a bump to the next top of a bump to the next top of the bump. So I'm going to bump out there and then I'm going to jump from here to there. So I'm going from the edge of the curve over to the edge of the curve. And I'm going to come this way and then I'm going to lift up and it's going to imaginary go that way and then it's going to bump right off of the belly. If you want to, if it's easier for you, turn your paper this way and think of these like hills. And then you're going to jump from the top of this hill to the top of this hill to the top and to the top. So I am going to keep adding some scales on my fish and I will check back in in a minute. Now you will see that my fish belly is all full of scales. What I am going to do next is I'm going to start to color, but I'm going to show you kind of a cool trick. I am going to use a red-orange, it, so it's kind of in between red and orange. If you only have an orange, then go ahead and use that. This kind of looks like a goldfish to me. If you would like your fish to be a different color, that's fine. I would recommend that you not use blue because we're going to make our background blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press firmly and I'm almost making a rainbow. So I went along the line and you could, so Ms. Tuttle used a permanent marker to draw hers. Since you are using pencil, you could trace over your lines with a crayon pressing firmly. So I'm going over it more than once. And what this is going to do is it's going to help my scales stand out a little bit more when I color. And it's going to add some shading to my work, which will be pretty cool when you watch the next step. So I'm going to finish going over this, pressing firmly, so a little bit hard, and then I'll show you what's next in a minute. At this point, I have traced the extra lines of my fin and my tail and this fin. I've also traced around this fin because next what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my crayon and I am going to color in my whole entire fish body with just one color. One thing that I want you to notice as I have finished coloring in my fish's scales and the color of its body is that where that red orange where I pressed firmly it really helps those scales look a little bit more three-dimensional. Next what I'm going to do is on our fish's eye I'm going to color in the space of kind of that smaller circle but not the smallest circle so that this way I have a cute little eyeball that has a little shiny spot on it. If you are feeling like you are up to the challenge another thing that you could do is kind of go back in and you could color a little bit more firmly on the belly of your fish and kind of add a dark line there because that is where there would be a shadow on your fish and on the bottom of your tail just to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional and I have used the same color I've used the same red orange color for pressing firmly and coloring neatly 
and adding that shadow. So I only used one color on the whole body of my fish. The next thing that I might add would be maybe I'm going to add some bubbles coming up from my fish, but I'm going to draw those in crayon, but not color them in because I'm going to color the whole background for the water. But I'm going to draw a couple of nice round bubbles, different sizes coming up from my fish. So I have three little bubbles sneaking up. So I'm going to leave those white when I'm coloring the background. Now my background is all filled in. My fish is colored neatly. The only white I have is those little air bubbles and on the eye. So I really think this came out well. I can't wait to see yours. One of the things that we practiced today was making a texture. So now if we were to be able to touch this artwork, it would look like it would feel scaly, but it's still nice and smooth because it's just on paper. But what we're doing is we're tricking people a little bit into thinking that this fish would feel bumpy by adding a texture to our work. We practiced our bumpy lines, drawing neatly and coloring carefully today. I hope you enjoyed following along and I will see you next time. Bye everybody.